All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson, uh, giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash, double honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. Um, this is Araktiza from the Great Millstone GMS Atlanta camp with another uh, quick video. And um, this video is going to be going into uh, this latest article that um, just came out recently. Um, I have it pulled up here on uh, CNN.com. All right, you should see the title there. It says, uh, the doomsday clock reveals how close we are to total annihilation. All right, and uh, you, know, you know, other brothers have did videos and you know, posted on it. And, um, you know, pretty much, I mean, it's self-explanatory, man. <laughs> all right, you know, we're living in that time, all right, prophecies which are contained in the Bible, are coming to pass, you know, in this year, all right, um, 2023 has been coined, the hopeful year of the prophecies coming to pass, and we see it, man, all right, you know, things are revving up, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, the uh, conversation as far as the uh, market of beasts is happening, because that's a major prophecy, you know, that's one of the major prophecies that have to take place uh, prior to, you know, what what we know is doomsday to come, right? Which essentially is World War Three, nuclear fire, nuclear war, okay? But there's a different other pro other prophecies that are, that are, you know, set aside that have to come to pass first, and MOT, MOTB being one of them. But this, is, this shows you that, you know, the prophets are here, man, and, you know, Starting with the apostles on down, we've been speaking on these things. Now I'm just gonna read just a, a little bit from this article. All right, just so you can get the, uh, you know, kind of get the gist of it. It says, uh, we scroll down here. It says, the doomsday clock has been ticking for 76 years, but it's no ordinary clock. It attempts to gauge how close humanity is to destroying the world. Now we know what the scriptures say that the earth abided forever. All right, so the earth is not going to be destroyed as they would, you know, tell it, you know, as far as the end of the world, thinking that the earth is going to implode or blow up into a million pieces and everybody just dies off. No, the end of the world is referring to the end of this rulership, okay, the end of Esau Edom's um, rule on the earth. All right, and then it says on Tuesday, all right, which was uh, yesterday. Okay, right now it's uh, Wednesday morning. It says uh, on Tuesday, the clock was set at 90 seconds until midnight. The closest to the hour it has ever been, according to the bulletin of the atomic scientists, which created the clock in 1947. Uh, midnight represents the moment at which we will have made Earth uninhabitable for humanity for 2020. Excuse me, from 2020 to 2022, the clock was set at 100 seconds to midnight. Yeah, and it's funny that these things are being said while Esau is in power. All right. Because <laughs> Esau is a cancer, right? You know, and Esau, for those that don't know, Esau is the biblical name for the so-called white man. Okay. When, when he's in the power seat, when he's managing the earth, all right, things just go to crap. You know, everything dies off, all the animals becoming, all the animals, different species of animals, uh, they all become, um, uh, extinct, so to speak, all right? And the people are in a, you know, high, high level of depression. The earth is just in a bad state, and it's because of this damn devil, all right? Um, and then it goes on, it says the clock isn't designed to definitively measure um, existential, if I'm saying that right, threats, but rather to spark conversations about difficult scientific topics such as climate change, according to the bulletin. Right. Well, the, the, the conversation is being had because <laughs> we in a time of prophecies. All right, you, you're seeing how the earth is just 
<clears throat> you know, uh, passing away, so to speak, because this damn devil is in power. All right. You see the talks of what? Nuclear war. I think I just seen another article where Russia just launched some missiles, <clears throat> I think, on the West Coast. All right. Of America. So, you know, things is happening, man. <laughs> and pretty soon before you know it. Actual missiles are going to be launched on this place. Now, I just want to get a couple of scriptures on that. That's that's pretty much the article. I mean, you could read on, you know, it goes into the history of the um, doomsday clock. But yeah, and then I think the word doomsday is mentioned in the uh, scriptures. I think it's in the Apocrypha. We'll probably get that shortly. But I just want to read the scripture. This is the first one that came to mind as I saw that headline. All right, this is Isaiah, the 13th chapter. <clears throat> All right, you see the title there at the top, Prophecies About Babylon. And this Babylon is speaking about America. As you read through the chapter, you know, this is not referring to the Babylon of old. You know, this is referring to the new modern day Babylon. All right. Um, so when you skip down to the around the end of the verse, uh, excuse me, the end, the, um, end of the chapter, excuse me. It says, um, let's see, let's, let's start at verse 19. All right, Isaiah 13, verse 19, it says, In Babylon, all right, which again is talking about America, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the child Jesus excellency shall be as when the Most High or the Heavenly Father overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. How was, how was Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed? Or how was it overthrown? It was overthrown by fire. All right, the Heavenly Father rained fire down from the heavens. Because why? Sodom and Gomorrah was known for its high level of wickedness all right and the same thing with america all right america is sodom and gomorrah times 100 man <laughs> so you could just you could just imagine or picture what type of destruction the heavenly father has you know coming to this place man all right verse 20 it says it shall never be inhabited neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation neither shall the arabian pitch tent there Neither shall the shepherds make our fold there. So America is not going to be inhabited no more. As you see it now, all right, it's, you know, millions and millions of people that, that are here. All right, when it's all said and done, when the prophecy of the nuclear fire comes, after the aftermath, America is going to be a desert. All right, it's not going to be any, you know, human life form here. All right, it says, uh, first... 21 it says but while beasts of the desert shall lie there so there's going to be life form but it's going to be cre uh desert creatures all right snakes <laughs> all right uh, uh um you know different different sorts of uh, uh reptiles and fowls like vultures and and all of that different creatures and fowls that can that can live and thrive in a desert like climate that's all that's going to be here Okay, it says, but wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. Right, these are these are all desert, as I mentioned, desert creatures. All right, now here's the point. Verse 22, it says, and the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses, and dragons in their pleasant palaces, and her time is near to come. And her days shall not be prolonged. See that? And whose time is it talking about? It's talking about America. All right. So America, there is a there, there is an actual clock. There's a spiritual clock that's ticking. Or there's a spiritual, um, what do they call it? The hourglass that has the that has the grains of salt or the grains of sand coming down. You know, or there's an actual clock that's ticking on this place. All right. So it's so that time is short, man. So the fact that they moved the damn, uh, what is it, the damn clock, it was uh, 90 seconds to midnight. Yeah, the things is, 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 is about to hit midnight very soon, man. According to the prophecy, her time is near to come. Her day should not be prolonged. Because it seems like America's has been going on and on and on. You know, things have been gradual, but the Lord's about to make a speedy riddance of this place, man. All right, um, another scripture just came to mind. Uh, what's that? Job, um, is that Job 20? 
triumphing of the wicked is short. Yep. Job 20 and 4. I'm seeing that's the title up there. Zophar said the triumph, the triumph of the wicked is short, which the wicked is Esau. All right. Which is the so-called white man. We saw in the Job chapter 9, verse 24. All right. So it reads, Job 20, verse 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon the earth, <clears throat> that the triumphing of the wicked is short, meaning the reign. The reign of the wicked is short, man. The wicked is in power. You know, and I just explained earlier how you could make that, you know, observation just about just based upon how the earth, you know, the state of the earth, you know, got animals becoming extinct. Crime and violence is at an all time high. Satanism, demonism is at an all time high. All right. Idol worship, evil. I mean, just you name it. War. All right. The wicked is in power, but it says what? Verse uh, 5 again, that the triumphing of the wicked is short. So the wicked, the so-called white man, Esau, was only allowed a, a short amount of time to rule for prophecy's sake. And it says, in the joy of the hypocrite, but for a moment. All right, Esau is a hypocrite because he portrays himself as this pure, righteous, you know, individual or people. But secretly behind the scenes, they nothing but a bunch of goddamn devils, starting with the top tier elite bankers. All right, so they're hypocrites. But that's the point where it says uh, that the trial thing is short, man. Going back to this goddamn clock <laughs> that these damn devils done made. All right, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's about to strike midnight. All right. Then it goes into it more in verse uh, it, six. It says, though his excellency mount unto the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds, yet he shall perish forever like his own dumb. They which have seen him shall say, where is he? Yeah, so even though Esau has achieved this level of power with through his, you know, through his pseudoscience and his technology, you know, through his space, his space navigations and programs, he's been able to excel and get on top of the nations the lord said he's going to perish like his own dunk all right he's going to basically he's going to, he's going to go from from you know from high from high to low put it in basic terms all right verse eight it says he shall fly away as a dream and shall be found and shall not be found yet he shall be chased away as a vision of the night because he's going to go from this high up position and he's going head first into slavery in the world to come all right, which is the kingdom of heaven. You know, he's going to be he's going to be an afterthought. He's going to be a figment of our imagination. And it's all going to come fast. All right. Um. Yeah. Verse nine, Then it, you know, it, it, it goes on more that I also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place anymore. Behold him. Yeah, he's going to be taken out of place. All right, that crown or that seat that he has, he's going to be plucked out of there. And then to go further in the kingdom after they serve a thousand years of slavery, pursuing the Obadiah, I believe when you read the, uh, what is it, the 15th verse on down, it says that there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. All right, and that's after the thousand years of hard bondage and servitude in the kingdom. So even in that instance, yeah, <laughs> at the wow, all right, the Edomites are going to be done away with. All right. All right, AKA the uh, wicked. Another scripture that just came to mind. Um, actually, two of them. I know it's Habakkuk, the second chapter. And it's like another one in Revelation 10. Um, let's see. Let's get Habakkuk first. And then we'll get maybe one more and then uh, we'll shut down. Let's see, Habakkuk 2. Excuse me. Um, not Habakkuk 2 and 4. Habakkuk 2 and 3 is the point. Um, I'll just start at 1, all right? Habakkuk 2 verse 1, it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And what's spiritual about that? It says Habakkuk was set upon the tower. Habakkuk was a prophet. As, as you see entitled, the Most High Answers the Prophet. The prophets are back today, all right, on the tower, 
had the high tower, high position, all right, as watchmen. As the scripture says in um, Isaiah, the 62nd chapter, where the Lord said, I've set watchmen's, watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. So we're on that tower, just like Habakkuk and the rest of the prophets, to warn the people of these things to come. All right. Verse two, it says, And the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables. So the prophets received visions and dreams. You had angels that came to the prophets and gave them, you know, breakdowns and gave them, you know, foresight and what's going to happen in the future. All right. And the prophets, you know, and their scribes that was with them, you know, wrote these things down on paper, on scrolls, man. Which is how we got the Bible today. And it says to make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. All right. Yeah. We you know, read these things. We read these prophecies. We were, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit and we ran. All right. We started our quest, you know, towards the truth. All right. We started running that race. And then verse three is the point. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. All right. <laughs> Keyword time. Right, they got that big ass clock or half a clock right there, right? <laughs> for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. All right, we at the end right now, currently. All right, we in the last days. So it's gonna it's gonna happen. That's why it says it shall not lie, man. As the scripture says in um second Ezra's uh what's that fifteen? I think it says his words are faithful and true. It's gonna come to pass. We just got to be patient. It says, uh, though it tarry, wait for it. Okay, the word tarry means to be, um, to, to linger or to prolong. So sometimes it feels like the prophecies are prolonging. You know, you're thinking that the, 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 the MOTB would have came years ago. But, you know, you look back, you kind of see, oh, okay, I see how to how the most high do. You can see how, to, how it gradually came about. It had to come in steps. You know, Esau had to bring this, then he had to do that, and he had to get the the card with the chip on it, then he had to do away with that. Now you went from placing your card in the slot, now you're tapping your card. Now you now you're scanning your phone. Now it's like a it's like a gradual thing. You know? So it feels like it's tarrying, but as the scripture says, though it tarry, wait for it, because it shall surely come. Then it says it will not tarry. So at, so as at some point. The prophecy is going to roll out fast. It's not going to prolong no more. All right. And we'll know when we at that time. You know, the fact that Esau moved his damn needle close to there. All right. Even he could see that we at the end. All right. Let's get uh one more. I think it's Revelations 10. I have to find the verse. I can't remember. I know it says uh her time shall be no longer. Yeah. Verse 6. Um. Yeah, let's start at verse five. All right, and this is speaking about uh, this is speaking about America. All right, um, Revelation ten and five it says, and the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that therein are, in the and the earth and the things that therein are in the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel when he shall begin to sound the mystery of the most high should be finished as he have declared to his servants the prophets all right so the point there is back in verse six when it says that there should be time no longer which links back to the other scriptures we read about how it's not going to tarry, shall come to pass, and how the days are not going to be prolonged. Speaking about these end time prophecies, man. All right, this 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 this, this is not going to prolong much longer. All right, we at the we at the, the the brink of all out catastrophic destruction. All right, and uh, yeah, the warning's been going out, starting with the apostles, the elders, and different you know the bishops and. All the brothers in Great Millstone and all the brothers that's, you know, teaching the word throughout the four corners of the earth. They've been telling you that these things are coming. All right. 
what you know brother not brothers but people you know talk crap about us scoff and you know you, 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 you know you guys been talking that says this and that but it's becoming more and more evident <laughs> that we was on point through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. So this place is on its way out, man. <laughs> this place is a ticking, a, a, a ticking goddamn time bomb. All right. So, you know, I just wanted to bring out a couple of points on that this morning. All right. Um, Lord willing, you was edified. All right. Yeah, that was the, you know, the, that was the major point on it. Um, you know, all right, giving all praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Rachat Wadash, and Lord willingly, uh. To the next uh, video, I'm going to say Shalom.